<clears throat> the origins of milk. Why were cows milked in the first place? Say that five times fast. I remember visiting the Turkey Hill experience with my roommate in Pennsylvania. My roommate crouched under a fake cow, fiddling with its others like an imbecile. When she says she likes country boys, he said, to my char chagrin, this episode stuck in my head for quite some time. Ever since, I've wondered about the first cow milker. This is a question that has been floating around around the internet for a while. So why did the first man to milk a cow milk it in the first place? Some would say desperation or starvation. Others, say, may, others might say preservation. In this case, common sense explanation is not enough. By just, uh, by just assuming we'll never have a deeper understanding of the history of part of our culture, that is, the history of milk and how it contributed to the development of the human body, the food industry, and even smallpox, I myself never considered the importance of milk beside the fact that I needed it for my tea and oatmeal in the morning. We take it for granted. Some people might not realize that milk and cow brought the domestication of cattle, the better development of butter and cheese, and actually shaped the food industry. We know and need today, yet we don't really know how cow milking initially came to become a part of the modern culture. One could argue that this says a lot about our society, appreciating the results of understanding the, the origin, regardless, in pursuit of such knowledge, but it begs the question, why did the first cow milker decide to kill milk a cow, and how did the milk persist to become the global commodity it is today? Well, I'm here to tell you why. Across millions of forums spanning the web, a surprising amount of people discuss the origins of cow's milk. The people in discussion are questioning the varying ages, and they don't have to have a vested interest in farming. Despite their curiosity, it came to my attention that they seem to be asking the wrong questions. There are massive gaps in the commentary. To understand why, how, and when cows were domesticated, we must first understand where they came from. The wild ancestors of modern cows were called Arocs. They once ranged throughout Asia, Asia, Europe, and North Africa. According to Procon's historical timeline of cow's milk, Aurochs were the first domesticated, were first domesticated 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. It evolved into two types of domestic cattle, Bos Indicus and Bos Taurus. Bos Indicus is a breed of cattle that are more suited to tropical climates, while Bos Taurus are more adapted to temperate environments. As a result, scientists ha have differing op opinions on the spread of of said domesticated cattle. Some believe Aurochs spread throughout Eurasia, and others believe that Aurochs were domestically se separate, separated in the Pakistan slash India area. It makes it, it makes sense, then, that Aurochs adapted to temperature and, and tropical climates. If they were domesticated in separate countries, be that as it may, according to degraded fats found on European pot shards, Ascribed to the Neolithic era, according to AS, AS Pro chronology, the Neolithic era dates from 10,000 or 10, 200 BC, 10,200 10, BC to 4,500 to 2,000 BC. English and Northern European farmers may have been the first or among the first to begin chicken cow's milk. It's possible that the first Aurochs were milked in 8,000 to 10,000 years ago in two different parts of the world. Since domestication is attributed to cow milking, but it's likely that European farmers were the first. As such, humans have been drinking cow's milk for about 6,000 to 8,000 years. But we all have all this information, we don't understand why. Why did they drink it in the first place? Is it, it's a safe assumption to say that the first milker, as I have affectionately come to refer to him as, he didn't suddenly decide to conduct sexual experiments with his farm animals. Likewise, he probably didn't wake up and say, Hey, I'm going to further Western civilization with a revolutionary discovery. Today, a... Rather, it's likely the man in the question, or men, it could have been any number of people, were starving. They witnessed the cow... Oh, I lost my place. They witnessed the cow's calf fucking on its mother's teeth for nourishment, and went to try it for themselves. While it's speculation, the most likely the most likely hypothesis is that desperation and starvation drove early farmers to cow's milk. 
This is the most widely accepted theory in the history of the historical farming community. Although the exact person and reason may be debated, how then, despite the initial intolerance, did milk grow to become a major part of farming in modern culture? The production of milk provided a constant source of nourishment for early farmers, and it grew into other products. Milk is credited with its development of the modern food industry because its presence of today's culture, but also because of the creation of cheese and butter. And neither would exist if one brave farmer hadn't attempted had attempted fate on what I assumed one of many particular dismal mornings. In what is now Kujwe, Poland, archaeologists find ancient strainers with evidence of milk fat molecules. This states this dates cheese making to approximately 5,500 BC. Consequently, the earliest record of cheese joins the archaeological records earlier than butter, which doesn't appear to approximately 2,500 BC, and may have even been named after cheese. The word butter is believed to be derived from the Greek term boitron, which literally translates to cow cheese. The first appearance of butter recorded in history was on ancient Sumerian tablet depicting dairy production in its early forms including cow milking and butter making. After cheese and butter became staple in the average kitchen, milk and other dairy products still progressed to become huge commodities. Milk had been described as the virtual queen of the supermarket. As told by author Gabor Valines in her book Milk, A Local and Global History, contrary to his blurry origins, milk actually has a fairly clear history within the last few hundred years. Why does this history matter? Well, you don't care about how your food is produced? Food studies have become more popular recently, paving the way for more modernized food industries and other commodities altered to create a so-called sterile commercial identity. But that's just another issue. Even though the food industry we know today was formed slowly, it stretches hundreds of years into the past, branching out of the first cattle cow arrived in Plymouth County in 1623. While the Pilgrim states have sailed to Plymouth, they did not believe, or Plymouth, they did not believe that any cattle aboard the Mayflower, the Pilgrim, oh, they did not bring any cattle aboard the Mayflower. The Pilgrim's cattle did not arrive in the New World until the ship Anne arrived in 1623, and the ship Jacob in 1624. The cattle described on the ships weren't diminutive, but nor were they massive. They were described as having black hides, so it was speculated that cows were in fact carry cattle, a now rare and historic breed. As Americas as the Americas expanded, it milk played a vital role in survival of its people. During the food shortage of 1772, Roman Catholic Spanish priest Juniper Acera said, "Milk from the cows and some vegetables from the garden have been our chief substance." Afterward, the benefits of milk drinking only spread. Milk continued to evolve with society in earnest and becoming a huge part of production. The history of cows and, by extension, milk stretches beyond the food industry, and they weren't even used to just supply sustenance. In the 18th century, common folk Europeans began to realize that the milkmaids, who milked cows on a daily basis, were seemingly immune to smallpox. Upon further investigation, the public realized that these dairymaids had contracted cowpox through their near-constant exposure to the cow's udders, resulting in an unintentional immunity to smallpox. Cowpox is a similar virus, virus to smallpox. It Albe, much milder as the bovine, bovine equivalent. This knowledge spreading plague led English physician Edward Jenner to develop a vaccine based on the milkmaid's immunity. Jenner discovered a sample of cowpox from the woman, from the women, and used it to deliberately infect a young boy named James Phipps. Afterward, Jenner exposed Phipps to smallpox, and James Phipps did not contract contract disease. After experimenting with other willing subjects, Jenner officially concluded that. Exposure to cowpox resulted in smallpox immunity. He later marketed the cowpox vaccination in the United States. The vaccination was introduced in the early 1800s. After cowpox was used in the indirect vaccination against smallpox, the demand for milk grew exponentially in 1840 and the 1920s. In the 19th century, alcohol, dis alcohol distillery companies similarly grew, resulting in excess swill, which are a spec grain byproduct of alcohol product uh, al eh, alcohol production distilleries began opening dairies to feed their cows with excess waste swill the swill was low in nutrients and other poor feed for the cows which resulted in the poor milk quality and sickness in the cows whoever drinks their milk that's right including us humans 
The germ-infested milk was rampantly flying, flowing through. The United, the United States was leading to foodborne illness without infection. However, this process was not understood by the general public, and French chemist and biologist Louis Pasteur helped prove that such diseases were the result of germs to his germ theory. He has henceforth been considered a founding father of microbiology. Pasteur's research uncovered the harmful microbes in milk that caused sickness, so he created a process that would later heat up pasteurization. This, re this process rapidly heats and cools the milk to kill residing organisms. Even after Louis pa Pasteur discovered the helpful qualities of pasteurizing other raw liquids, it took until about 1895 for the public to recognize commercial pasteurization. For years, the foodborne illnesses were attributed to raw milk, such as the New York typhoid epidemic in 1913. It wasn't until 1917 that the pasteurization process was made mandatory, but the machines were used to were built to make the receipts process easier, and the spread of milk continued. Before the patent on glass milk bottles were established in 1884, ironically, before commercial pasteurization, milkmen would carry their milk in buckets to provide a cleaner milk for community. The glass milkman is born. Remaining a stereotype in the white picket fence American life until the 1950s, when the milkman cartons began to appear in modern markets. Even when the popularity of milk was at its peak, remember when I told you that cows and milk just weren't used for sustenance? Skim milk specifically had an interesting tidbit of history. Before skim milk became a huge weight loss attraction, nobody really drank it as skim milk was a result of the butter making process. It, it was often discarded. In the 1920s, it was found so useless that companies often dumped it into rivers along with their excess that they had it with buttermilk. Specifically, Wisconsin dairy plants were guilty of dumping approximately 40,000 pounds, 40,000 pounds of raw dairy product into straight waterways because of this influx in milk production. Is that a thing? The rivers would occasionally flood onto the countryside. Plus, bluntly speaking, the surrounding area smelled absolutely awful. To avoid further pollution and the problems that came with it, the companies were forced to either dispose of their excess milks in some other way or create an use for skim milk. Skim milk didn't seem to have many, much value until the 1930s. There's a byproduct of skim milk called casein, Circa 1930. While experimenting with skim, skim milk, Italian American scientists found out they could extract them, they could extract the then unknown casein from it, transform it into a fiber, and use it as a material for countless projects. The experimentation was in part to further the production of wool and cotton, <coughs> a wartime supply. Later, skim milk was also used in World War II as a package dry product for the Allies. But the case in plastics proved to be much more beneficial to the war effort. The, play the official process of creating case in polymer was as follows. When milk is heated and combined with acid, when milk is heated and combined with acid such as vinegar, the case in molecules unfold and reorganize into a long chain. Each case in molecule is a monomer and the chain of casein monomers is a polymer. The polymer can be scooped up and molded, which is why plastic is made from which is why plastic is made from milk is called casein plastic. Through this casein became a plastic how okay. Through this casein became a plastic applicable to almost anywhere. Some people also believe that casein might be the next big fashion statement, but it was also so called creamy clothing. It began to be go out of style almost as quickly as it was discovered. In recent years, a more modern German fashion designer named Anke Domaske has furthered milk fashion, inventing a new fiber called Q-Milch. If you're not into cotton clothing, mist, maybe this is the material for you, got fiber? Creamy milk clothing aside, it proves the point that the production of milk from the pasture to the supermarket is a slow and steady climb. It began as a drink and was manipulated to become a cheese and butter. And moved on to a global commodity, it stretched from early farmer substance to desperate times. <laughs> a recognizable, marketable product on your front doorstep every morning, the gallons or liters we use today. Because of its influence on culture and its presence as a never fading commodity, other similar products followed milk. Goat milk, for one, was interesting. If less accessible alternative to traditional cow's milk, goats were domesticated around the same time, Sursa 8,000 to 10,000 years ago if not a little after ancient arcs. Their milk was available, albeit less popular. In recent years, a massive influx of vegan alternatives to milk have appeared. 
such as coconut milk, which is not exactly recent. The milk from the extracts of almonds, soy, hemp seed, oats, rice, and quinoa. Even modern coffee creamers and other manufactured creams are the result of our new cow-made beverage. Milk itself seems to be a wholly unimpressive thing. How can you define milk with all its layers in its history? Milk, a white liquid of questionable origin, sucked from a bovine creature, ascribed to the spread of many illnesses until it's naturally, unnaturally heated and recooled to keep its drinkers healthy. The strange thing, milk. Despite its faults, milk grew from the results of a desperate farmer's hungry act to, starting, to a starting point for cheeses of all kinds, to the luxury of butter, to its permanent establishment. As reigning queen of the modern supermarket, milk has come a long way. Have we even had a right to question its origins? I think not. Realistically, knowing the origin of cow's milk does not dramatically alter our lives. But remembering and understanding how we evolved to our current state matters. The knowledge alone is worth the pursuit, and it brings us to a better understanding of parts of our origin. We have developed countless things, for lack of a better term, to encompass all humankind's accomplishments since the beginning of time. Understanding the origins of the parts of our diets of food is one step closer to understanding the development of our very own species. This is, a, this is an issue that has affected the entire world's development, not one country, not one race. If someone were able to make a similarly food industry changing discovery today, it would be well documented in modern history books, such as, or as such recovering bits and pieces of the past that have been forgotten long is up to us. Use this information as you will. Us Use it to further your comprehension of the advancement of food industry and what has become to clear misunderstandings, misunderstandings on milk themed messages to surprise your family with some impressive information on the next industry Thanksgiving. The spread of knowledge matters, so keep asking questions about it. Did the introduction of milk into society and it Introduce any new specifically milk-borne illnesses? What kind? To slow down the further advances of the food industry, I implore you to keep looking and to find just new. <laughs> I implore you to keep looking and to find new accepted facts of society to question. The first cow didn't milk itself. I just hoped that the first milker didn't study suffer any hooves to the head in the process of making such a revolutionary discovery.